Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today's video showcases eight ideas for Valentine's treat and gift packaging. I'm going to start with the Valentine's scalloped treat box. I'm going to speed through a lot of this. I've cut out a bunch of the die cutting and things like that simply to make the video go a little bit faster. Since I have so many different projects to share with you, the treat box has some great score lines like all of the th dimensional die cuts from Lawn Fawn. They have lots of different packaging ideas. And I like to use a bone folder to score all of those lines really well, get them, get a really nice crease. It makes the assembly of the box so much easier. So I started with that. I'm not gonna put the box together quite yet. I'm gonna go ahead and decorate the front of the box. And I have a fancy scalloped circle stackable die cut from white cardstock. Then I've got a stitched circle from the Narwhal cardstock. And then the heart and box are both die cut from the Chili Pepper Lawn Fawn cardstock. And that heart and arrow are from the Stitched Heart Envelope die collection. The arrow is die cut from the Black Licorice Lawn Fawn cardstock. Then I'm putting some adhesive on those tabs on the bottom of one of the panels of the box and simply assembling the box, making sure everything's put together and then go ahead and finish assembling that. Every little treat box needs some sort of a gift tag so that the recipient knows who it's from. I love the tiny tag sayings, stamp set and dies, and I've die cut a heart tag from the die and I, then I'm stamping the tag with the for you greeting using black the jet black ink and then I'm going to use the little heart from the tiny tag sayings stamped with lobster red ink flip the tag over and I'm going to use one of the two it's it's a two from message but it's actually the two and then the heart I thought that worked good for Valentine's Day on the back so you can write who it goes to and who it's from. Some of the Sweetheart Lawn Trimmings twine works perfectly to attach this little gift to the treat box. I'm going to knot that to finish off the first little treat or gift packaging idea. The next project is a Valentine's candy box created with the candy box die. Again, you're gonna need two of these dies or two of these panels die cut from some cardstock. I used the chili pepper cardstock for the box itself. And then I have used black licorice cardstock for the extra sentiment banner. The greeting I'm gonna stamp on that banner using Versamark ink is from the Plan On It Holidays and it's gonna read Happy Valentine's Day. I'm stamping that with Versamark and then I'll heat emboss the greeting on the banner with white embossing powder. That'll really make it stand out. The XOXO is from the Stitched Heart Envelope die collection. It's a nice smaller size of the larger Scripty XOXO and really works well, I think, on the smaller scale gift packaging. I am going to die cut that from white card stock that has been adhered to fun foam. So it's dimensional. It'll be a dimensional sticker that'll go right above the Happy Valentine's Day. Now you could assemble this box as is, but I really wanted to keep the decoration on this box fairly simple. So what I decided to do was go ahead and stamp an all over pattern, tone on tone pattern on the box panels using lobster red ink and then that little heart with the arrow through it from the Plan On It Holidays stamp set. It's a nice small image, perfect for doing a repetitive pattern like this. I am turning the heart this way and that not worrying too much about being perfect. This is gift packaging and it'll be assembled into a box or a candy box shape. Again, I'm going to score all of those die lines or those score lines when I die cut the box. Make sure they're nice and creased. 
And then go ahead and assemble the box by putting adhesive on all of the tabs. Before I assemble the box, I am going to go ahead and attach my banner. And then here is that dimensional die cut XOXO, which is just the nice, it's a perfect size for the box. Line those up with the adhesive that I've already placed on all of the tabs, and then simply assemble the box. I'm going to wrap a little bit of the Sweetheart Lawn Trimmings twine again around each end of the box. This is just going to keep it consistent. The whole ensemble, all of the boxes and the gift card holders I'm creating today are all in the same color family and all have similar aspects to them. Just, I like to try to keep it all consistent that way. But if you're looking for some gift packaging ideas, hopefully this will inspire you to maybe think of how to use the dies you might already have. Next, I'm gonna share an owl pillow box. So much fun, I love this little owl. What's great about the owl is it can be created from any any color for any season. I know this was when it was released, it was released during a fall season, but by simply changing up the colors, he makes the cutest little Valentine's owl. I die cut the base of the box from narwhal cardstock, and then the wings are gonna be are die cut from the chili pepper cardstock. Plus, I'm going to back that front panel with chili pepper cardstock so that red shows through the little feather areas and then I'm going to decorate his eyes. Now I have die cut the outer layer from chili pepper cardstock using a scalloped circle stackable. Then for the white part of the eye, I have used a stitched circle stackable and then for the black pupil, I also use the smallest stitched circle stackable. So I have all those pieces laying out here so you can kind of see what all I used. The little teeny tiny heart is from the small stitched envelope die collection. And I'll show you what those eyes look like. They're so super cute. I think the layering really adds a lot to this particular project. You can position the eyes however you want. So I'm going to lay this out flat and go ahead and assemble the back of this box. This is just a little piece of chili pepper cardstock that I trimmed down to fit the front panel. Once I have that adhesive in place, I'll just put that little scrap of cardstock back there. And then I can go ahead and add the eyes. Those little feathers popping up just gives you a nice little glimpse of the color inside the box. I'm gonna glue the heart in place in the lower left or right corner rather of the owl. It has a couple different layers. So it has an outline and then the solid heart, which I think is fun. I'll just use a glue pin to add some little dots to put the outline there. Also, for the beak on the owl, I could have left it red, but I really wanted to have the beak be orange. So I die cut that face panel from some fake tan Lawn Fawn cardstock, and I will go ahead and do a little inlay with that after I attach the eyes. The layered eyes make so much of a difference, I think, with the pillow box. You can do all kinds of things. I've used googly eyes before, but I was really trying to find a way to use my Lawn Fawn dies in creative ways, and circles are such a fun way. You can do so many different things with them, and this creating really fun eyes is just one idea. Here's that little orange beak. Just do a little inlay with it. And then I am going to take some glossy accents and cover the pupil of the eyes. This is gonna make them nice and glossy and just add another layer and more interest. I'll also add that to the beak and the little heart. I added a little wink of Stella Clear Glitter Brush Pin to the heart before adding the glossy accents so it's a sparkly heart. 
Once this glue is completely dry, I can assemble the pillow box. I really, when Glossy Accents is drying, I like the surface to be as flat as possible so it doesn't pool funny. So I set that aside to completely dry. I'll assemble my box with that adhesive along the tab on the side. Adhere the wings to the back of the box. And then go ahead and assemble, push in the two little end pieces. I think these would be darling as treat favors for a classroom of kids. To finish it off, I'm gonna wrap a little Sweetheart Lawn Trimmings twine again around the uh, belly of the owl. I've stamped the gift tag with greetings from the tiny tag saying stamp set again. And that will finish off the pillow box owl Valentine's die or die uh, the Valentine's owl gift box. Next, I am going to share an idea on creating a tote bag using the Lawn Fawn tote bag die. This is just another idea for nice, fun treat or gift packaging. There's so many fun little bags. I also have a scalloped rectangle from the Stitch Tart Envelope die collection, as well as one of the hearts from that and the arrow. And I'm gonna use a Stitch Tart stackable for my white heart, as well as a Lawn Fawn heart for the red heart. The Storm Cloud card is from heart is and arrow are from the Stitch Tart envelope. Plus I have the gift tag again from the tiny tag sayings. Once I have all of my elements, then I can go ahead and start putting it together. I'm going to mask off the area along the scalloped edge, the stitching to the scalloped edge of the rectangle and add some interest to the background with a little tone on tone stamping. This is the Gingham Backdrops stamp set. I love this for creating some fun plaid designs. I'm going to ink it up with lobster red ink, stamp that right there on the rectangle, and it's going to give a great layered look without actually having to have an extra layer. That masking is going to keep the scallop border plain, so it'll give a tone on tone look. I'll peel off my washi tape and you'll see that that edge is still nice and crisp and, and solid and then the center has that great gingham look. So much fun, really easy to do. Next, I will attach my hearts to this panel. My stitched heart first. I'm gonna tip it kinda at an angle. And then I will attach a red heart to the center. This is from the hearts die collection. The smaller stitched heart from the stitch heart envelope is going to go next to that. I'm going to cover it with the Wink of Stella clear glitter brush pin and then add a layer of glossy accents to this heart and that's going to not only make it a nice glossy sparkly heart but I can take the arrow then and press it into the glossy accents to secure it. And then I need to set this aside to completely dry. Once that's dry, I can assemble the tote bag. I'll place my panel on the front first, then put adhesive on all of the tabs and the bottom of one of the sections, put those together, and then hang the little gift tag from the loops along the top of the gift bag. For this one, I'm just gonna wrap the string around the top, thread that tag through, and then tie it into a little bow to finish it off. Next, I am gonna take the goodie bag die. This is the original dimensional bag die from Lawn Fawn. And I'm gonna die cut this from some kind of pearlescent white cardstock. And then 
I am going to create some flowers from heart dies. All of these hearts are die cut from the hearts die collection. This, I created some cards here a couple weeks ago for my personal blog using this same technique. But I'm scoring the hearts down the center. It just makes it a little easier to fold them in half. And then you can assemble them into flower shapes for dimensional hearts. And this works especially well for something like a little treat or gift bag, since it's not something that needs to kind of be flat to go through the mail. Here you can see it a little bit better. Sorry about that. I think I was zoomed in a little too close. So I've got lots of red flower petals from the chili pepper cardstock. From the cilantro cardstock, I've got some smaller hearts that I can use as leaves. Plus I'll die cut a few additional hearts from some smaller heart dies to use as maybe little petals kind of flying out from this big one. I'm using glue dots to position these and get them exactly where I want them to go. For the center, I die cut one the smallest heart from the Lawn Fawn Hearts collection from the white cardstock adhered to Fun Foam. And I'll secure that in the center probably with some Ranger multi matte medium. Just trimming off a little bit off the edge there where the flower overhangs. Again, I want to keep this flat because, until I get the glossy accents dried that I'm going to be applying to the center heart of this box. So there's the Ranger multi matte medium. I'll put my dimensional heart right there in the center. I used a little wink of Stella Clear Glitter, glitter Brush pin on that, then the glossy accents. Had some air bubbles that I popped with a straight pin. Here are those smaller red hearts that I'm going to attach to some additional little red petals. I love the look of the bright red on um, a, a really bright white background. I think that's very classic Valentine's look. Once that's dry, again, adhesive along the tabs. I've scored all of the edges with a bone folder or all the creases. Go ahead and put both panels together to create the gift goodie bag. And I will finish this box with another tag from the Tiny Tag die and Tiny Tag Sing stamp set. I'm going to loop that one several times around the top, tighten to a little bow, and trim up the ends. Next, I have the Valentine's Milk Carton created with the Milk Carton die. You'll need two panels die cut from this to assemble the box. Then I have created a long border from the 11 inch edge of the Chili Pepper cardstock using a stitched scallop border. And I have got a couple of die cut letters from the Kohl's ABCs, die cut from Narwhal cards, Narwhal cardstock. The scallop border is going to go along the bottom edge of the milk carton, and I'm going to use my score pal to score the, the uh, scallop border so that it goes around the box shape easier. So I'm just marking it using my score pal to score those little sections. Once I have that all done, I'm going to put some nice strong adhesive on the back of my scallop border and attach that all the way around. And that really gives a nice finished decorative touch to the bottom of the milk carton. So super cute. Now on the front of the milk carton, I am going to secure the bottom first here with some additional glue dots. That's just going to make sure it does have a little, it, it does connect. So you wouldn't have to, but I like to make sure it's going to stay put. And so I put a little adhesive there on those tabs to hold it down. I'm going to take the Kohl's ABC's die cut XO 
and adhere those to the front of the milk carton with a little heart die cut from the small stitched envelope die collection. Those are the heart I'm using are leftover pieces from one of the previous projects. I tried to use up all my little pieces as much as possible. So the little white heart, put some little dots around it, attach the red outline. I did put a little string on the hang tag Again, created from the tiny tag sayings, stamp set and dies, and attach that with a clip. I'm using the Wink of Stella clear glitter brush pin on the letters and the heart, and then covering both of those with glossy accents. Glossy accents is was my best friend for all of these projects, and it's just a great way to add a really fun touch that's not gonna be an extra layer really or anything like that. It's just a really fun decorative touch. Now these teeny tiny hearts were die cut from the Valentine's border die and they finish off the scallop border. My final two projects are a small stitched envelope and a stitched heart envelope. And they're very similar, very they're about the same size, but one of them folds out to a heart and one is just a gift card envelope. So here is the stitched heart envelope. I'm gonna create these great labels for the back of each using the fancy scalloped circle stackables, stitched hearts, and then use like the heart and the arrow from the stitched heart envelope. Again, with a nice layer of glossy accents to secure the arrow and to make the heart nice and glossy. I'm gonna mask off the edges of that scalloped label from the stitched heart envelope again, this time stamp stamping it with narwhal ink for that gray and white plaid. I've got banners from the Extra Sentiment banners stamped with a greeting from the Love Letters stamp set, stamped with Versamark and heat embossed with white. And then the Dimensional XOXO from the Stitched Heart Envelope is die cut from Chili Pepper cardstock adhered to Fun Foam for that dimensional greeting. Makes a cute little label for the outside, or you could use it as an enclosure card inside the envelope if you wanted to. So this is gonna open up, the red envelope opens up into a heart. The Stitched Small stitched envelope is a great for gift cards. So if you've got a little gift card to give to your loved one, this would be awesome. And I accidentally put the adhesive too far up on the edges here, so I'm gonna fix that real quick. This one is die cut from Narwhal. The label, again, the label is from the small stitched env envelope, but the same technique that I used for the other one where I masked off the edge and stamped tone on tone with lobster red ink. The layers for the seal on the back of this envelope are just like the other one, just different colors. Very, very similar. Glossy accents for the sparkly heart. Put the arrow through the center. Now for the stitched heart envelope, I unfolded it. I am going to stamp a couple of greetings from the Love Letters stamp set that read, um, a little message to say Happy Valentine's Day so that when you open this envelope, it'll have a greeting hidden inside. I'll heat emboss that with white embossing powder. You can put a little extra adhesive on the seal to make them close and all of the Valentine's projects are now finished. I hope this has inspired you to create some fun Valentine themed gift packaging for Valentine's Day. The supplies I use to create these projects are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos showcasing Lawn Fawn stamps and dies used to create Valentine's themed cards that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.